In the Oprah Winfrey interview, there was a question asked that everyone seemed to miss, and I want to share it with you and see what you think. But first, I have to set the scene. Tina Brown, in her wonderful book, The Palace Papers, names her prologue very aptly, Kryptonite, and she opens with the bombshell Oprah Winfrey interview. She introduces us to the teaser for that interview where Oprah famously asked Megan, were you silent or silenced? And of course, we didn't get to see her answer. We had to tune in to find out. And now we know that her answer was the latter. So in that interview, Oprah follows up with a follow-up clarifying question, more or less asking her, well, who silenced you? I'm paraphrasing, but that was the gist of the question. And Megan never answered it. She never answered that question. She did an elegant 360 and then said that she'd been told to tell her family and friends no comment. Now, what person in the public eye isn't told to tell their family and friends no comment if approached by the media? It's stock standard. It's just common sense. So that is very different to the allegation that you've been silenced by anybody, by an institution, by a family, by your in-laws, however you want to sort of set it up. It's really a serious allegation. And it has nothing to do with the answer that she gave. And it's interesting that in Harry's book, Spare, the only one running around like a blue-ass fly telling everybody to be silent and not talk to the media and no comment is Harry. He tells everybody, don't tell them anything, don't talk to them, make no comment. I mean, he said it to his father-in-law that he'd never met, bellowing it down the phone while he's lying recovering from a stent operation, the poor man. So do you see? this really serious allegation and the non-answer. And I am amazed that more has not been made of this. The next part in the interview, Megan says that she uh, felt very betrayed because the institution or the family, we're not quite sure who, was prepared to lie for other members of the family, but were not prepared to tell the truth for her. Now, this is personal opinion, and I'm just going to put it out there what I think. I think that she was referring to the Sandringham Summit, and I think she was referring to the statement put out after the Sandringham Summit saying that Prince William did not bully Prince Harry and Meghan out of the UK, and it was their decision to leave. Now, in Harry's book spare, he's in the back of a car talking to Megan on the phone and she is absolutely furious that this statement was put out after the Sandringham Summit. And Harry says, well, I, I never gave approval for that statement. I, I never agreed to that statement. They, they must have forged my signature. Yes, Harry, if I had a really angry Megan on the end of the phone to me, I'd probably say the same thing. So later on in the interview, Oprah acknowledges that Meghan clearly doesn't feel supported by somebody, either the institution or the royal family or what. So she tries to clarify who is it exactly that didn't support you. And Meghan answers, and it's important to give a direct quote. She says, it's hard for people to distinguish the two because there's... It's a family business, right? Yes, Megan, it's a family business. Let's reduce the legacy of Her Majesty to the status of a family business. The royal family are the public faces of a $28 billion empire that pumps hundreds of millions of dollars into the UK economy every single year. But what Megan fails to mention is that they don't own these $28 billion worth of assets. They hold them in keeping for the people of the UK and for future generations. They can't chuck a tantrum, sell it all off, 
run off to Montecito and buy a McMansion with an inordinate number of bathrooms. Now, I am not going to exhaust you with going over the tandem conversation where Megan implies that there had been racist conversations and that somehow that affected Archie getting a title. Not going to go into that. But I am going to give you a bit of updated information, which I found out from um, numerous sources that Megan was very aware of the status of Archie's security upon the time of his birth and also his titles. Tom Bauer actually says it in his book as well. And I'll explain to you what that is. So when Archie was born, it was made very, very clear that he would receive security from the Metropolitan Police in the UK because he was the son of senior working members of the royal family. There was never any doubt that Archie would receive full security for the rest of his life because he was the son of senior working members of the royal family. Never any doubt. The only people that put Archie's security in doubt were his parents when they quit and left as senior working members of the royal family. That put Archie's security at risk, actually it took it away because you can't expect the people of the USA, the taxpayers of the USA, to pay security for your son in America, parts, part of the British royal family. I mean, that's just idiotic. And you can't expect the British taxpayer to pay it while you're over in America and not even working anymore for their country or the royal family. Like, it's beyond belief, idiotic. And yet here she was sitting in an interview implying that the security wasn't guaranteed when Archie was born. Now, I am stating that she must have known that was untrue because at the time of Archie's birth, they were senior working members of the royal family and his security was guaranteed. The other thing about titles, soon after Archie's birth, Meghan received a phone call and she was informed that Prince Harry was made Earl of Dumbarton upon their marriage. She was Countess Dumbarton and that Archie had that inherited title of Lord Dumbarton. And Meghan knocked it back because it had the word dumb in it. So my point is, she knew that Archie on his birth had security and also had a title. So what was she talking about in the Oprah Winfrey interview? Did she forget? Or maybe she had baby brain. So now we get on to the question that I promised you at the start of this video and I wasn't delaying it because this is when it now happened, when Harry joined the interview. Now there was pleasantries and um, exchange of hellos with him and Oprah and then this is what Oprah says. You've been watching from the side, yeah? And Harry says, some of it. Now, let's examine that. If you were going to do an interview with your wife in front of 49 million viewers with Oprah Winfrey, don't you think you would discuss what you were going to disclose? I'm not suggesting that they had the questions prior to the interview or anything like that. I'm just saying, as husband and wife, wouldn't you discuss what you were going to divulge and what you weren't going to divulge. Because if you didn't, that is, again, idiotic and irresponsible. So I'm assuming that they would have had a discussion and he would have had a fair idea what she was going to say. Now, wouldn't you sit beside your wife if you're going to say such serious allegations that tarnish the reputation of a thousand-year-old institution, not to mention your immediate family, wouldn't you sit next to your wife in solidarity and support while she threw them under the bus? 
Failing that, if you weren't a very brave person, wouldn't you stand off to the side, but wouldn't you pay attention to every single word that was said? And wouldn't you interject or correct when you saw that there was something that was misleading or something that she may have misunderstood or something that could just be misinterpreted? Wouldn't you correct it then and there at the time? Or wouldn't you correct it when you joined the interview? And Oprah gave him the opportunity to correct it because she brought up the tandem conversation uh, allegations that Megan made and Harry deflected it off. Oh, I'll never talk about that. I'll never talk about that. He didn't correct about the status of Archie's security upon his birth when they were still senior working members of the royal family. They were receiving full security and their child was going to, was receiving full security. And he could have also cleaned up about the titles because he would know. He was, he would know he was made the Earl of Dumbarton upon his marriage. He would know that Archie had a, had a hereditary title. So he didn't clear anything up. And the way he got out of being responsible again was to say those rather merely mouthed three words, some of it, that gives him a way out, doesn't it? Gives him a glorious way out yet again from responsibility, from accountability, from having to receive consequences for actions. Says a lot about the man, doesn't it? I think those three words are very, very telling in that interview. Tell me what you think. Please, if you enjoy this video, uh, leave a like and subscribe and comment. Tell me, what do you think about those merely mouth three words? Some of it. It's not very brave, is it? And I also think that Oprah Winfrey did herself no favours doing this interview.